Congratulations, you did it. You finished the 40 day fearless devotional. The number 40 in the Bible signifies a time of maturity. Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days. Um, he went into the wilderness after being baptized, beginning, getting ready to begin his ministry. And when he came out, he was ready to start his ministry. He went into the wilderness and that's where he had the temptations of Satan. And he overcame Satan and then came out a different man. He, uh, he was stronger. Um, he had faced evil on a deeper level. Same thing with the children of Israel. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. They went to the Jordan River and they sent the spies in and they were like, these guys are way too big and crazy for us. And so then they spent 40 years in the wilderness, but when they came back, they were so mature, they were willing to follow crazy directions like walking around Jericho without speaking. You see, 40 represents a special time of maturity. And if you've done the 40 days of fearlessness in our devotional and been following along on YouTube or just reading your Bible in the devotional, you are more fearless now than you were 40 days ago. Now, you may not feel any different, but we can't base our spirituality on feelings. We have to base it on faith. And God says, when you spend time with me, I give you strength. It's great. The last 39 days, every day we've been studying different Bible stories. And some of the stories I'm sure have connected with you on super deep levels. Other stories, well, maybe it didn't do it for you. But the thing is, all of those stories were put into the Bible to encourage you to live your story. Today we read John 14. And Jesus is talking to his disciples, and this is one of the last times he gets to teach them. And there were so many great things he spoke about in that chapter. But what jumped out to me this morning was he said, My peace I give to you. Now, I've heard this verse many, many times before, but this morning it just hit me. Jesus isn't just saying, I'm going to give you peace. He's saying, I'm giving you my peace. Now think about the stories of Jesus where he had peace, like walking on water. Peter's flipping out and drowning, but Jesus has peace and he's doing the impossible. Jesus has peace as he breaks the bread and feeds 5,000. Jesus has peace as the demoniacs come screaming straight at him, naked and bloody and possessed, and he has them stop. Jesus has peace as the Pharisees try to trick him up and trap him with their trick questions. And Jesus says that peace, that peace that can take the pressure of the crowd, the, the severity of the storm, the danger of the ministry, that's the peace I'm giving to you. And then Jesus says, I don't give like the world gives. And I was thinking about that phrase, wondering like, what, what exactly does that mean? And then it just hit me. You know, the world is constantly promising us the thing that will fill us up, that will fix us. And, and depending on what life stage you're in, that, that answer is different. It might be money. It might be success. It might be marriage or sex or, or an amazing experience, getting a goal, getting an object like a car or a house or even something as silly as like a new watch. But the world says, if you have this, you will have peace. Once you have X amount of dollars in your bank account or go to this event or finish this book or master this skill, then you will have peace. But the crazy thing about it is that that, that marker is always moving forward. You never arrive at, oh, this has filled me up and I'm totally fine, except with Jesus. Jesus says, I don't give like the world gives, meaning I don't promise you something, but then don't fulfill the promise. I fulfill my promises. And that's the secret to fearlessness. It's not working harder as a Christian. It's not doing this devotional. I did this devotional. Now I, have, I must be more peaceful. I must be more fearless. It's like, no, did you connect with God consistently for 40 days, because that 
brings you peace? Did you learn from the stories of Hezekiah and Abraham and Esther and Paul and realize God's got this. I can trust in him. You see, I don't know what problems you're facing and I don't know what problems we will be facing in the next couple of months, but I know that God is bigger. He's bigger than any conspiracies you might believe in. He's bigger than any uh, health challenges you might be fighting against. He's bigger than any financial situations that seem overwhelming. He's bigger than your badness. And he's got this. And as he was sitting around the Last Supper table with the disciples, Jesus knew later that night everyone would abandon him. He knew Peter would disown him. He knew Judas would betray him. He knew he would be beaten and accused and whipped and crucified and killed. And he knew he was going to raise himself from the dead. He knew how the story ends. And even though he knew in between that happy ending and where he was sitting was a lot of chaos and a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, He said, I have peace, and I will give you my peace. You see, the crazy thing about a gift is you can't earn it. You just get to open it. And while Christianity is filled with many cliches that we hear, and it goes in one ear and out the other, sometimes it's good to stop and think about what Jesus is actually saying. He's saying, I will give you peace. And and that promise doesn't mean only in good times, only for certain types of people, only once you earn something. He's like, I'm giving it to you. All you have to do is take it. You see, one of the lies that we all struggle with is that we are not in charge of what we believe. We need evidence to believe something. And that's actually not true. You can believe whatever you want to believe. So you can believe that Jesus has given you your peace. And you don't have to be afraid. Or you can believe that you have to earn that peace. And if you're good enough, then he'll give it to you. Or you can believe that you're not good enough. And that gift is not for you. And you're just going to sit in your stress and pain All three of those options are available to you regardless of your circumstances, regardless of your track record, regardless of your church affiliation. That's the awesome thing about Jesus' gifts. They're there. All we have to do is take it, believe that we have it, and then everything changes. So thank you for being with me for these last 40 days as we've gone over the devotional. Hopefully, the thing that has sunk in the most is one of my favorite phrases. God's got this. Because He does. Because He loves you. Because He has great plans for you. God bless. 